Right now on Denver 7 News at 7 a.m. on Local 3, breaking news this morning, the former Prime Minister of Japan is dead. We are getting new details about the suspect behind his assassination. An off-season shakeup in the works for the Avs. Darcy Kemper appears to be heading to free agency. The replacement, the Avs, just got in a trade. And a lot of Coloradans hike, but this man is really going to the extreme. <laughs> I am going to push a peanut up Pikes Peak Saturday. Yeah, he's not nuts. He's actually uh, not even the first person to do this. The history he's hoping to make if he does it in less than eight days. So wow. could be the <laughs> slowest climb up the uh, Manitou incline we've ever seen. Uh, thanks for joining us. I'm Nicole Brady. And I'm Jessica Crawford. It is going to be a hot yes. weekend. Feeling for that guy yeah. who's pushing that peanut <laughs> up, up that mountain this weekend, Stacey. He's going to need more of a little umbrella hat to help him mm -hmm. out with the heat that's going to be uh, ba blazing down on us over the weekend. Highs today will be in the 90s. And then we're in the triple digits for tomorrow. Sunny skies here across the Front Range. This is our picture from City Park. Our temperatures at this point are in the 50s and 60s. We have 63 here in Denver, 40s and 50s off to the west in the higher elevations. And we're headed to 93 degrees today with mostly sunny skies. If you're headed out the door this morning in the next couple of hours, temperatures will still be in the 60s and 70s. Then we're in the 80s as we get through the late morning and early afternoon. Those highs in the low to mid 90s here from Littleton to Denver into a Aurora will have scattered thunderstorms across the eastern plains, but then that hot weather settles in. I'll have more details on that coming up. And I want to take you to a crash we've been following for about 30 minutes now. This is our view from Air Tracker 7. This is a crash on Federal involving an RTB bus. Looks like the tow truck is on scene there. Going to tow this pickup truck away. Still working to learn more about this crash. We want to know if there's any injuries and, of course, if there were any passengers on that bus. You can maneuver around the crash, but if you can, avoid the area. Also want to show you another problem spot. This is I-25 near 20th Street. The CDOT camera turned on me, but there is a disabled vehicle vehicle on the on ramp. You can move past it, but again, you'll have to move pretty slow. Let's go to the map. One quick check of at least one drive time for you. Westbound I-270 from I-70 to I-25, 11 minutes. Eastbound running you 12. Well, breaking news, the former prime minister of Japan was assassinated during a campaign speech. Shinzo Abe was the longest serving Japanese prime minister. He resigned in 2020. The Japanese government says he was shot twice in the neck and the back by a man who used a homemade shotgun. The suspect is a 41 year old Navy veteran. He did not try to leave the scene. Uh, we have not yet heard a response from President Biden on this news, but Secretary of State Antony Blinken offered the nation's condolences. He called the assassination shocking and profoundly disturbing. Back here in the U.S., funerals begin today for the victims of the deadly July 4th parade shooting in Illinois. The alleged shooter's father says he's taking no responsibility after signing a consent form for his son to obtain a gun permit. Here's ABC's Mona Kosarabdi. This morning, newly revealed police reports show several disturbing incidents involving the suspected Highland Park parade shooter and his family. A report from April 2019 saying the suspect attempted to commit suicide by machete. Less than six months later, police were called to the home again after the suspect threatened to kill everyone in the household. The suspect turning over multiple weapons, including a 24-inch samurai sword. Police submitting this document declaring the suspect a clear and present danger. But the suspect's father, who sponsored his son's gun permit, tells ABC News he wasn't aware of the suicide attempt and believes the threat against his family was not genuine. Making threats to the family, I think it was taken out of context where it's like a, just a child outburst, whatever he was upset about. <laughs> A candlelight vigil was held last night in Highland Park with the seven victims of Monday's rampage. Funeral services for three of them are scheduled today. We have each other. We will lean on each other. We will lift each other up. We're now learning more about one of the youngest survivors of the massacre, eight-year-old Cooper Roberts, who's in critical condition on a ventilator. His family attends the July 4th parade each year. Cooper was shot in the chest and he suffered significant injuries, including a several severed spinal cord. Doctors fear Cooper may be permanently paralyzed. 
His twin brother, Luke, and his mother, Julie, were also shot. His mom, waking up in a different hospital, quickly requested to be discharged when she heard about Cooper's condition. Quite frankly, she probably should not have been discharged, but she insisted on it so that she could be at her son's side. As for the suspect's father, he says his son was raised with good morals. He says he does not regret sponsoring the gun permit, but says the system needs to be overhauled. Monica Sarabdi, ABC News, New York. And here locally, a group of Colorado gun owners is suing Superior over its stricter gun safety laws. Denver 7's Veronica Costa is live with why they say the days old law needs to be dropped. Superior's stricter gun laws actually ban assault weapons as well as magazines that hold more than 10 rounds. These laws were just passed last month, right after that Uvalde, Texas school shooting. Now Rocky Mountains gun owners say these laws, they're unconstitutional. This group actually filed that lawsuit in a federal court just yesterday. It cites the recent Supreme Court decision, Bruin, which struck down a part of New York's concealed carry law. The decision said governments can regulate but can't prohibit the public carrying of firearms by law-abiding citizens for the purpose of self-defense. Before the superior gun laws were passed, we spoke with town trustee Tim Howard, who told Denver 7 he hopes superior's measures and the ones that were passed over in Boulder, Louisville, as well as Lafayette, prompt some state action here. My hope is that the state legislature will take forward a number of these for potential statewide adoption, that Governor Polis will look and recognize this is what this is what the people of Colorado want. And that lawsuit also goes as far as targeting a state law that was passed right after the Boulder King super shooting that gives local governments the authority to regulate guns. We did reach out to superior trustees, but we haven't heard back as of this morning. In Denver, I'm Veronica Acosta. All right, thanks, Veronica. School resource officers from around the country are wrapping up a conference in Aurora. Two people impacted by the tragic shooting at Sandy Hook Elementary will be the closing speakers. Michelle Gay co-founded the nonprofit Safe and Sound Schools after losing her daughter, Josephine Grace, in the attack. And school resource officer Will Chapman was one of the first responders at Sandy Hook. Last night, conference attendees gathered at the Columbine High School Memorial. Former principal Frank DeAngelis read the names of all 13 victims as the group reflected on their mission to keep students and teachers safe. While well, Denver wants to host the NFL draft, the Denver Business Journal reporting the Denver Sports Commission plans to apply to host the event the next time the applications are open. The city will likely try to host the event between 2025 and 2027. Cities that hosted the draft during the pandemic reported economic impacts between 94 and $133 million. That is so much more than the $57 million Denver estimated from hosting the MLB All-Star Game last summer. Next year's draft is in Kansas City and the 2024 draft is in Detroit. Three former Broncos are semifinalists for the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Mike Shanahan, Dan Reeves, and Randy Gardishar are nominated in the seniors and coaches categories. Shanahan led the Broncos to back-to-back -back Super Bowls. The finalists will be announced later on this month. Avs goalie Darcy Kemper appears to be headed toward free agency. General Manager Joe Sackick uh, says he, Kemper wanted more money and Sackick was already facing a salary cap. Uh, Sackick is already preparing for a goalie change up. The Avs got Alexander Georgiev in a trade with the Rangers and already the Avs are the favorites to win the cup again next season. There is no better way to cool off than with some ice cream. One Colorado chain has a new location that you can check out this weekend. And Colorado sisters share everything, including scoliosis. I bent down and she saw my curve in my spine. It was okay for like about a year. And then I had to get a brace and that was like the end of my life. Not really, but like I felt like it was. But I learned about a relatively new way doctors in Colorado are straightening things out.